You see, the mistake most poultry farmers make is they don't follow the vaccination timeline and they don't also pay attention to the poo, the color of the poo. Many people just feel like, ah, poultry farming is something I can just start in my backyard. It is easy to start and they just get into it. They don't believe that they need to have a proper guide. They don't know that even after treating it for four weeks, the fifth week you have to treat them for cosidiosis. These brown pullets, they usually suffer from cosidiosis from week two. They also suffer foul pus. But people don't know that. They just wait until they start having they start seeing the, the sickness, like they are more interested in treatment rather than prevention. So, and the best way to succeed in poultry farming is to prevent. I, I was seeing all these things, I never knew. I was losing by a loss over 40 bears. When they are in week 6, you have to treat cosidiosis. If you don't treat them, they, it will kill the whole of your bed. And then you must also be ready for the consequences of your action. This is the isolation center. <laughs> I don't know if I can use that word in this era of COVID. <laughs> That word is not tricky. Now, what the, the idea behind this is that in animal kingdom, they don't have regard for each other. It is like a survival of the fittest. So you can see that the bigger bears, the stronger ones, they just stand on the weaker ones. So that would deny some of these bears from eating. So what I do is I pick the bigger ones, I take them to the battery cage, then the smaller ones that, have known, that don't have the advantage to compete with the bigger ones, I leave them here. So I feed them intensely. So these ones now I can I feed them more. So as so that they can grow to meet up. You can see, you wouldn't believe that this look at this one, they are all mates. Oh, and look at this small one also. Look at this one, they are mates. Because they, they stepped on, they just denied this this one the right to eat. So you will not believe that they are mates with the other ones at the battery cage. So that is why sometimes what you do is you pay attention to the bears. You see the one that the, the bigger ones are oppressing, the bigger ones don't allow to feed. So you remove those bigger ones, then you, you separate the smaller ones, and then you feed them, you pay careful attention to them so that they can also grow to meet up. So that is what I'm doing here. So I will continue to feed them now until they are able to meet up, then I will now add them to the others. My name is Gaius Odiase. I'm a poultry farmer. I own and manage poultry ability farms. Uh, you see, that issue of feeding comes from uh, people not really understanding. The, you know, the feeding goes with the age. Now, week one, you are week one to say week two, week three, or even week four. We are expected to give them super starter. So some farmers, they may not know this, or some farmers, may, they may feel that, ah, these things are a bit expensive. And they begin to improvise like looking for a substandard uh, feed and they start giving their best. These things can actually affect the best. So it is important that at every stage, at every age of the chicken, you must uh, realize that, okay, at week four, it is time for finisher. If they are broilers, at week four, if they are pullet, it is time for grower. Or at week six, it is time for you to miss grower. And so you must follow this uh, feeding pattern. And then, of course, you must also follow the measurement pattern. I check their, not like their, their stomach, to see that, okay, there's enough feed there, at least. Because you see some of these birds, because they don't have feelings for each other. They can easily just step on the other one and over, just deny the other one from eating. So I ensure that I just randomly check to see that, okay, everyone has eaten something, or there's something here that someone, uh -huh. You can see that the, the, the like the stomach is even, uh, is, is a bit, is bigger. You know that, okay, something is there, there's enough feed there. Because some of these birds, they can just stand on the other one, especially if they are men, if you are not paying attention. They will just stand on the other one, or then the lesser one, will, the weaker ones will not be able to eat. You must make sure that when you are feeding them, you pay attention, you ensure that at least, all of them, they are all eating something. Then even from feeling it, you will also be able to tell if it's enough. <laughs> Apart from just knowing that, okay, uh, 5K, if, it's, if they are 100 bears, you have, you have to give them 10 kg of um, feed, but you must make sure that at least all of them have also taken something. So you must ensure that the water that you give them must also be water that you can drink. So in other words, the water must be very clean. If you give them infected water or con contaminated water, you know the implication of that? They may fall sick and that can also cost you more money. Considering that uh, poultry farming business today is very expensive. And 
prices of drugs and uh, feed is, is getting higher every day. So when you now self-create another problem for yourself, you know that's uh, really hard. So this water will aid their digestion. Any lukewarm bed, anyone that is maybe a bit withdrawn, or maybe the one that is not active like others, is not struggling for food, or is just kind of repulsive, is not is him. So you just have to pay attention to those. But so far, what I can see is that they are all struggling, they are all active, they are all ready to eat and drink. Because one of the common mistakes many farmers make is that they would rather treat instead of preventing. And it is cheaper to, pre to prevent. Because when you are preventing, you, once you notice that it is coming, you just buy any of, it could just be an antibiotic. And that can completely eliminate the threat. But by the time you now allow the threat to fester, the disease to fester and it becomes, sometimes it becomes viral, you now have two, three or four suffering from it, you now have to spend more. So that is why it is important to always pay attention to the color of their pool, how eating and how active the best are. So that you know which one is, uh, is giving uh, any symptom of sickness. If it is already greenish, you know that they are, about, they are due for Lasota. Lasota vaccine, which is, non, which is usually uh, monthly. And if it is, already, if it is white tree and liquid, then you know that, oh, it's time for maybe an antibiotics and all that. Then if it is reddish, you know it's time for to treat cosidiosis. Those things are very, they are key to surviving in poultry farming. At least that way you reduce mortality rates. The farm I used before now, before I got the battery cage, it was open range. So the mistake I made then was from biosecurity. Me, I'm not understanding biosecurity measures. Then, at that time, I didn't know that I was supposed to pay attention to their poo. The color of their poo is very important because before they get sick, there's usually the symptoms from the poo. So I didn't, I was noticing watery, watery, reddish poo. But I didn't know that it was, uh, something was coming. So I just, so every morning, by the time I go to my farm in the morning, I will see that six bed. It was still brown pullets like this. Six is dead already. The following day, eight, like that. Ah, I was just losing bed continuously. I didn't even, I was like, I said, I have given them uh, antibiotics. I have given them all this now. I never knew that I failed to treat cosidiosis because cosidiosis is very dangerous. Severe cosidiosis will result in reddish, uh, reddish or bloodish pool from the chicken. You will see them, they will be laying, the, the, their pool will be very red. And sometimes there will also be watery, whitish pool mixed with it. Ah, I, I was seeing all these things, I never knew. I was losing, but I lost over 40 bears. It was later I now realized that I now had to uh, snap it and uh, took it to a vet. So now I said, ah, you did not treat cosidiosis properly. Oh. And uh, I said, ah, me, I didn't know that I was supposed to treat cosidiosis. Oh. So that was a huge, in fact, it was an egregious mistake from me. I was supposed to have um, follow, uh, spent money to learn. If I had paid a vet at that time to say, okay, I have pullets now, what are the steps? So I will be going every week and I will be learning. So it is important that before you uh, begin uh, poultry farming, you must have, if not just a mentor, you must have a guide. A mentor can non, can, may not necessarily be somebody. It can also be a poultry guide that can guide you, that will tell you, okay, when they are in week six, you have to treat cosidiosis. That it is important. If you don't treat them, they, it will kill the whole of your bed. And it was almost getting to that point. Many people just feel like, ha, ah, poultry farming is something I can just start in my backyard. It is easy to start and they just get into it. With that, they don't believe that they need to have a proper guide. They just think it's something that they can just continue to paddle and paddle like that. Some, some people will just come and say, ah, I need four weeks umbrella. And so far it's already treated. They don't know that even after treating it for four weeks, the fifth week you have to treat them for cosidiosis. You have to treat them for some other disease. You have to deworm. You have to, so you have to pay attention to these things. So that is why it is important that before you even begin it, you need to have a proper guide in place so as to know the biosecurity measures that you have to follow. Like the vaccine timeline, first, second, third, and the fourth vaccine timeline. Then that cosidiosis, like all these bears, like this uh, pullet, they also suffer uh, foul pus. But people don't know that. 
they just they just wait until they start having they start seeing the the sickness like they are more interested in treatment rather than prevention so and the best way to succeed in poultry farming is to prevent and how do you prevent is to follow a guide a timeline like in week one you know that week one i'm going to vaccinate them lasota i'm going to give them uh, uh, antibiotics i'm going to give them this for week one then in week two this is what i'm supposed to do i'm going to treat them for coccidiosis and i'm also going to vaccinate them at a certain time so by the time you follow this biosecurity measure it will be easier for you to at least excel in your poultry business you know when you are buying this deal chick sometimes they can be very cheap depending on the period you are buying it. For example, at the moment now, because we are not closer to festive period, so about uh, day old chicks now is you can actually get a hundred for less than uh, 20,000 Naira. So some people are carried away with that emotion. They just be like, ah, 100 bags for 20, less than 18,000 Naira. They just buy 100 bags. Not thinking of where am I going to put it? Do I have enough space for it? You know, by the time they are in their first and second weeks, you may not uh, notice it. But when they now get to three, four weeks, you see that they are bigger and the place becomes very over, uh, smaller for them. So they don't start having problems. That is why you see this problem of overcrowding because most farmers, they do not really consider the implication of uh, the best they are buying. They just, they, they get carried away with the cheaper price at their old chips. So it is important that uh, you must uh, consider where the, pen, the poultry house, the brooding house where you are going to stock the best, you must consider the space and then you must also be ready for the consequences of your action of not considering it because at the end of the day they are going to start perching on each other. You know animals they don't have regard for themselves, the survival of the fittest, they can climb on each other, they can pet, you see them they perch on each other and at the end of the day they can eat themselves and until the, the, the weaker ones die off for the bigger ones to succeed. So they don't have that emotion. And then you must also uh, be sure that the place we are stocking it is properly uh, uh, fumigated. Before stocking the beds, you have to fumigate it. We usually use formalin. So you must ensure that you, fum you fumigate the, the farm space, you clean it or you can even wash it. Then the ceilings and the environment, you spray it. So it is important. That way, you are able to not just fight overcrowding, you are also able to at least give your bed a, a survivor chance.